So we're going to be, all of us actually here, are all going to be flying to Ottawa tomorrow or Friday yeah. to be there for Saturday, to be at our capital for the Esther's Arise that we're leading. There are people flying from across Canada to gather there wow. with us. And so we'll be leading that, which is part of the 1 million women gathering in Washington, D.C., so we're wow. one of the international gathering with Lou Engel and his team. And yes. so, so we're heading up the Canadian arm of that uh, in Ottawa. So uh, yeah, so we're very uh, excited and ready to, to <laughs> go. We thought, boy, it'd be great to have Dr. Francis Miles come and give us a word as, uh, as we're preparing. So it's great. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. So good to have you. Fantastic. Love you guys. Yeah, thank you. Love you too. Wow. Well, listen. Um, <clears throat> I have. Uh, I was thinking about what to talk about, and um, <clears throat> and what the Lord put upon my heart is something that me and um, Katie Souza we have been contending with, um, which is that as the as the 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 coming of the Lord, you know. Uh, uh, draws even much nearer and their fulfillment of prophecy concerning Israel, you know, and just the fact that, you know, all the prophetic signs are lining up, that they need, that one of the things that I'm, we are seeing and we are sensing that God is going to, before the coming of Jesus, God is going to raise a, a Moses generation. You know, and uh, what I mean by modern generation is that we are going to be the generation that can deal with altars that are uh, uh, um, the altars of Egypt, which is symbol of the old uh, symbol of Egypt is always a prophetic symbol of the world system and the demonic technologies and altars that surround that system designed to imprison the people of God from going into their inheritance. Amen. So that the cry, the prophetic cry of God, let my people go, remains the same, you know. And um, but there is the Moses generation of intercessors and apostolic leaders that God is raising. And one of the things that we we you see with Moses, and we also see it with Elijah, you know. At least the, you see is that is the ability to mobilize the uh, other elements of creation. In, in the army of God, you know, the Bible, God is called the Lord of hosts, okay? But that title, as you research the word, the word Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, it actually includes everything that can be mobilized to fight for righteousness. So the army of God is not just, um, is not just restricted to the an angels. And we thank God for angels, their different rankings and, uh, battle formations and the different things that they they get to do for us but there are the um the, there are other elements of creation that are actually part of the army of god including ourselves we are part of the army of the lord of hosts you know we are we're just fighting and uh from the earthly perspective but that word lord of hosts is actually very all encompassing it includes everything anything in creation god can use you know, to uh, you know, that can that he that he can use or he has used to be able to defend the purposes of God. So even as you get ready for this going to Ottawa, because I know what you are dealing with, what kind of ministry you are, you are you know you are dealing with uh, turning down altars that are keeping America and Canada, you know, uh, subject to the demonic powers. And like I've always said in my my book, the Battle of Altars, it's really what spiritual warfare comes down to the Battle of Altars. What order are you operating from is really the difference between people. You know, it's a difference between family members. It's really the orders you are that are driving uh, your narrative. So anyway, um, in the in in the, in in that light, I what, what this is what I felt the Lord putting upon my heart is something I brought to the Suzanne he National Prayer Call as they we as they were also contained. It brought me in because we are contending for the destiny of America, which is also ranking in the balance just yeah. like the destiny of Canada. Yeah. You know, I believe there's a divine sisterhood between America and Canada, yeah. you know, and that's why the enemy knows that if he gets Canada and America, he's got the world pretty much in a, in yeah. a, 
you know, because between Canada and America, they are, you have been, these countries have been the biggest uh, exporters of missionaries in the history of the world. To the, to the, in much of what we see today in the world, you know, if you go to Africa, you know, you, you either find the assemblies of God of, of America or the assemblies of God of Canada. They are the ones who have evangelized Africa big time and, and I'm sure other nations. So the enemy knows what country, what, the, the divine birthright of these two nations is to be harbingers of righteousness, but the enemy is moving them in a different direction. But I believe not on our watch. So today, uh, so when, uh, so this whole subject about using creation in uh, in uh, in spiritual warfare, really for me started became extremely amplified when I had that encounter where witches in Africa almost killed me by speaking to the earth. Right. At that time, I, I, at that time, I had um, never considered uh, ever using elements of cre the elements of creation in spiritual warfare, really. You know, um, and so when it was used against me and it almost succeeded, I take notice of that because of the life I live. I'm not living some broken life. Some, I'm not living two lives. I'm, I have one life before the Lord, and it's very singular. And um, so I was very perturbed. I said, Lord, I don't understand. Uh, I've been to different nations. We, I've dealt with witchcraft. I've seen witches give their life to Christ in my services. What is the difference with the, in this situation that I almost got taken out? And the Lord said to me two things. He said, number one, he says, I allowed it because otherwise how else would I allow, would I, how else would I catch your attention that there are some tools of the spirit in creation you're not using that could change the game in warfare for nations and just different things. And so I allowed it. But secondly, you know, um, I said the method these witches use to attack you is different from what others have used in the past that have given their lives in the I've given their, their lives to, to, to me in your crusades, or I've ended up coming up with zero, couldn't do nothing to you, just have to leave. He said, these people, you know, mobilize the earth, you know, and the earth is a living creature that I cannot talk to the way you can talk to. And I was so shocked that God would, would, would make that admission. And I said, Lord, I, might, I know there's a revelation behind that. You know, and the Lord began to speak to me, he says, because I don't break the word. I don't break my word. You know, I said, um, I, 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 I'm the, I mean, he said, I, I, he said to me, I used to speak to the earth, you know, before Genesis 126. And he said to me, what happened in Genesis 126? And of course, being a Bible scholar and the level of, of Genesis, I said, Lord, that's when you made man. He says, bingo. And what did I do? I transferred the tools of power. And I, one of the tools of power that I gave to you guys is dominion over the earth. So I can take back what I've given to you. Right. So if you had not spoken to the earth, the witches would have killed you, you know, and you would have had a premature death, even though it was not your time for you to come. But I knew by my spirit that because you are, obeyed, you, are you know, you, you, love, you love the work of obedience, that's, that I'll get to you through the Holy Spirit and you'll be able to do what must be done. So I ended up by, by divine inspiration, speaking to the earth, you know, and, and uh, by, by the Holy Spirit's direction. He's showing me minute by minute what to do because I've never done it before. I didn't have a theology for it like I have now. In my book, I speak to the earth. But that time I was just following the voice of the Holy Spirit because I have really developed that over the years very, very well. So even though I knew that my theology, and of course I have a doctorate in theology, by the way, I even though my theological, uh, my, my, my makeup is... I know I love to, uh, I mean, I, I love the prophetic, I love the supernatural, but I love the word more than all of them. So I like to make sure that everything for so-called supernatural has a, has it as a genealogy of doctrine around it. And so, it, but, you know, but at the same time, I've worked with God long enough to know that the voice of the Lord can take you and I where our doctrine is yet to arrive right. because it's already there in the Bible. It has just not been revealed to us. So the voice of the Lord will never read you out of the Bible, but it will lead you beyond your theology. So I understood that. So I, I will, but I knew that the Holy Spirit was the one talking to me when he said to me, speak up, speak to the earth, because the witches that are trying to kill you spoke to the earth. And if you don't speak to the earth, the earth is going to swallow your body in premature death, just like she's doing now. But if you speak to her, 
you know, you, the voice of the redeemed has a, has a higher divine resonance in creation than the voice of any witch. You know, hands down, speak and watch what happens. So in obedience to the Holy Spirit, I spoke to the earth and I said, you not kill me. I reverse what the witch has told you to do. The reason I'm saying that is because we are going to do both. I mean, I, there's something, but I'm going to add something else. You know, it's something that I believe that as you're going to Ottawa, this is a very powerful prophetic technology because you're letting me tell some these guys, they don't take nations without doing this. Not, you can't take nation without being spiritual. I'm sorry. Politics can't take a country. They can't. They can because we live in a world of principalities and powers. So principalities and powers won't let you take a country because of politics. They may make you think that's what's doing it, but literally the reason you can take any country, you have to be spiritual. You know, man can do anything supernatural with the way we are designed as men. Any supernatural feat must involve a spirit entity. Unfortunately, uh, most of our governments have contracted because of the Illuminati, because of Masons, they are contracted with demon spirits. Right. So, you know, but, you know, so do not be deceived. They are very spiritual. You know, they have, a, they have a public persona that is acceptable, electable, but behind the scenes, the altars they are bowing to and the rituals they are doing will shock you. Just like when God came to the prophet Ezekiel and he said to Ezekiel, I believe it was Ezekiel 8. He said, come and see through the wall of the, of, the, of the temple. And he said, you'll be shocked what the elders of Israel are doing at night when nobody's looking. And he looked through the wall and God opened up the wall and he found the elders of Israel were meeting under in the basement worshiping Tammuz and other deities. But upstairs, they were worshiping Jehovah God. And God said, do you see what this is what they do? So they have a public persona that's electable, even funny, but do not be deceived. You know, life is very spiritual, you know, and so we cannot fight. So we have to fight fire with fire. But the good news is sense is that, that you know, the, the, the call to take nations is ours by divine right. Right. You know, it's not theirs. Right. You know, they might take it because the thief comes to kill, steal and destroy. But the enemy can only take the see the enemy can only take a country under an illegal mandate of, of thievery. That's what Jesus is saying. For the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the only mandate Satan has. So he can only take Canada under that mandate. So it's an illegal mandate. But it can stand if there is not, if there's not a, a church, a, you know, you know, that is can that is standing up, I stand up against that illegal capture of a nation. But for us as believers, it's we, taking over Canada, taking over America, it's ours by divine right. Because we belong to God, and he says the nations are mine. You know, so they are ours by divine right. But anyway, going back to my story, after I spoke to the earth, you know, the Lord, the Holy Spirit said to me, she has heard. Which was very funny to me to hear the Holy Ghost say, say that, that she has heard. It was very clear. He says, put it back, put the soil back in the ground, and watch what happens. And I put back the dirt, and bow him by God. You know, all the death, all the, cl the cloud of death, all the dirt that was uh, that was squatting up my body, you know, fell to the ground with a thud. I mean, everything lifted. I was, I'm telling you, I went from, I, I became an Elijah with superhuman strength, superhuman okay. strength, literally. Yeah. You know, that when I walked back in the hospital, my brother who was my crutch getting out into the hospital yard, had to take 90 seconds before he arrived in the hospital a room. That's how fast I was walking. I wasn't even aware. Oh, I knew I have energy. I have energy. I've been delivered. So that's when I went back in my, in, my, in my hospital room and I said, Lord, you know, I'm a theologian. I love what you did. I know I'm delivered. I know that's you, but God, take me where, take, take my doctrine now, where, you, where, you, where your voice took me so that I can preach you. I can give your people precept upon precept that what has been revealed actually is buried within the economy of scripture and the Lord did not disappoint. And out of that has come a book where I can, if I can tell some of the testimonies of governments that have been toppled, regions that have been changed around, governorships that have been changed because of people speaking to the earth. It's amazing the way it has gone. You know, and so I will, you know, so, uh, so today as I talk to you, that's what's on my spirit. It's mobilizing the, uh, the, element, uh, the earth elements for spiritual warfare is what, you know, is what I want to talk about. And so I'm going to give you two scriptures because there's something else 
I want to add to that something that I want to do you as a as a prophetic group. You must do this in Ottawa. You gotta do. I mean, I believe is is Ottawa the capital of Canada? Ottawa, yeah, Ottawa is the capital of Canada. Yes. Ottawa, okay, sorry, thank you. You know, I'm pronouncing it as like an African. Forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, but yes, uh, we will be at the Capitol right by the Parliament buildings. We're going to be standing at on the land of the Parliament buildings on as we come into Yom, Tur uh, Yom Kippur on Friday night, and then fantastic. we'll just under it on the Saturday gathering as well. Wow, fantastic! So I'm, this is going to be good. What I'm going to give you then. So anyway, everybody, then turn to the. I'm going to give you. There are two. There are. There are three technologies of using creation that God wants me to give to you as a group. So when you go to Auto Auto, uh, uh, you guys can uh, mobilize those technologies. Okay. Yes. Amen. All right. So the first one, Hallelujah, praise God. The first one is Judges, Judges five, nineteen and twenty. Judges five, nineteen and twenty. Is where we're going to start, and I'm going to give you a prayer. You're going, to, you're going to pray. I'll give you a framework, not just a, so you can, you can just flow within the framework. It's, a, it's more about the framework than the words. If the framework is right, the race, the race to flow with the Holy Ghost. All right. So this is um, what did I give you? I gave you Judges, Judges five Judges. nineteen and twenty. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I forgot. Okay, Judges five. All right. You know. Okay. So now, so we, you see, if you look, it, literally, uh, if you look at um, Judges chapter five, we're not going to go through the whole of it, but I can tell if you look at, at the beginning part of it, Deborah, Deborah, you know, and Barak was the army general, would ask her to help him battle because of her, because of her rank, even though she was a female. He realized that this battle was so spiritual and they needed somebody with spiritual rank. And right. she was a prophetess and had a, literally she was the apostle of the nation, you know, and he recognized that and did not let ego get in the way. He said, no, we want a victory, not just chauvinism. We want victory. So at the end of that victory speech, at the end of the victory, she begins to unmask the technologies that were involved in, the, in, in bringing down an enemy for Sisera that almost looked impossible because Israel was completely outmatched, you know. And as you see, as if you read it, you are, if you read uh, Judges five, now I'm going to go to it, the ones I gave you. But right before this, the verses before that, she's praising the Lord and singing to the Lord. In the song of the Lord, she actually mentions why they won the they won the battle, you know, because the earth was involved, the heavens opened, the clouds poured water. So I mean. The mountains gush before. The, so, I mean, every element of creation, many elements of creation were involved in this battle. Okay, now, the, 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 the one I want to, yeah, okay. Now, watch this. So, these people that came to fight with Deborah, Deborah says, you know, they came, we are, they are gods of war, okay? They came with their gods of war. That means, you see, even there's no battle that has never been supported by spirits. Okay? Whatever your prime ministers are doing, that, that is, you say, well, I, I can't believe he did that. They are gods. They are gods. They are demon spirits behind these walls. They, they, you know, so he says from verse, let me read verse 8. They chose new gods. Okay? They chose new gods. They were war. There was war in the gates. No, now, now watch this. Not the shield or spear was seen among forty thousand in Israel. So in Israel there was no shield. There was no spear. How do you go to war with such a mighty army that's fully armed without a spear, without a shield of any kind, because of the technologies that she employed? You know, um, you know. So, so watch this. You know, and so she she's about to she's about to tell us how these things happened for them, okay? So now I want you to look at this one. Um, okay. Look at verse, uh, verse, uh, verse uh, now we, we get to verse 19, verse 19 to 20. She now tells us how the battle happened. 
the kings came and fought. Then the kings of Canaan fought in Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. They took no spoils of silver. This is interesting. You know, so the, the kings came, okay? This guy, I mean, uh, you know, there was a flood of, of, of kings, of the, the Kenyan kings, you know, who are most of them are of the bloodline of the Nephilims in them anyway. And they came against Israel. You know, why would they, they and, but he said they took no spoil, meaning that they didn't, they, they, they lost so badly, they didn't even take one spoil, they didn't take one silver spoon out of Israel. Why? Because of verse 20. Because they fought from the heavens, the stars from their course fought against Sisera. What? So this is what she's saying. So Deborah understood Star Wars. She understood that many of these witches and warlocks, in order to win the day, they have to be able to control the stargates. You know, and so when you guys go to a tower, you need to say, you need to speak to us, Lord, we need to go in the court of heaven and say, Lord, in the name of that, we are asked, we are as the ecclesia, we are asking you in from the court of heaven to make it illegal for these uh, people in government to to or to operate from the stargates, you know, because the stars belong to the Lord. Right. There's a lot of scripture about this. Where, where you when God said to, to, to Job, were you there when I made the stars and they sang with joy? So the stars are living creatures made by God who can sing. You know, we are going to find out more about the stars. But you know, Robert, Ronald Reagan was was divinely inspired when he talked about the Star Wars. But what he was talking about is an ancient war in the realm of the spirit. So she, in other words, she was able to mobilize the constellation against against Sisera. Why? What it means is that the these guys, you know, they was they, they, the way they went to war. When they, whenever they whenever they went to war, they they relied heavily on the stargazers to tell them what to do, what battle formations to do. She completely nuked them. They could not connect with the stars. In other words, she completely annihilated their ability for them to communicate with the stars and use the use use the use the power of the constellation, you know, to be able to uh, uh, maneuver on the ground. And know where to be, you know, you know, because that's what they would do, you know. But she, she had apostolic authority. She completely issued a restraining order. They were unable to communicate with the stars, and this completely discombobulated them because they depended, they depended on the uh, astrology in most of their battles, you know. But what she did is she commanded the stars instead to fight on the Lord's side. You have the authority as a child of God to command the stars. To fight from the on the Lord's side, to remind by, by by prophecy, by divine proclamation, remind the stars they belong to the Lord. They cannot be under divine capture, but you can contend for them in the courts of heaven. You know this is so powerful. You know it's not by accident that when Yeshua comes, it is a constellation of the star that announces him and brings magi's with massive provisions. Could it be that part of the reason why we struggle financially? Is because you know the, the witchcraft is messing up with we mess, messing up with you know our alignment with our stars of destiny. I believe it may have a lot to do with that. But the bottom line is this: the Bible, the Holy Spirit wanted the story of the star of Bethlehem in the Bible. Why? Because if this, if, it, if 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 Jesus is claiming a star and he came to restore all things, then Yeshua is speaking. Because remember, the plan of Jesus, the anointing of Jesus was to be the redeemer of all things, the restoration of all things. That means if there's a star coming to announce the birth of the Messiah, and, and because of that star, resources are released, you know, for kingdom advancement in the hands of the, little, of, 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 the, of, the, of the child Jesus, he's trying to tell you, hello, I'm taking back stargates. I'm taking back the star constellations. They are not going to fight against me. They're going to fight for me. That's the statement he's making from the very word go. So when you go to Otara, you need to discombobulate whatever witchcraft they have spoken into the stars. That's what they do. That's why they love the full moon. They are, they, I mean, listen, they are not stupid. They know, they, I mean, they, you know, the, these people, they have given us the Gregorian uh, Roman calendar. But do you know they don't follow it? They follow the Jewish calendar. Yes. These witches and wizards. Why? Yes. Because they that's the calendar of heaven. So mm. they know when the constellations are lined up, they give you the, they give the, they have blinded the world with a calendar that makes sure you are not aware of what they are doing. You know, and they move you from the Jewish calendar. So you are not available on Yom Kippur. You're not available on Rosh Hashanah. You know, you are looking at the Roman calendar by Caesar, but it, all it was designed was to take your eyes off 
the prize uh, prophetic portals had opened up in time, and all of this, all of these prophetic portals, all the calendars, it, there's not every calendar of Israel is connected to the constellations. The, it, all, all of it, you know, that's what it is. You know, that's you know, that's that's how you are able to to judge when when Yom Kippur is. It is all by the constellations. So they understood. That's why they look for it. So they have put everybody on the Roman calendar. But guess what? Every witch, every 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 Mason and every Illuminati does not use the Gregorian calendar. They don't believe in it. They use the Jewish calendar. You know, but they use it for evil because they know that there are energies they can create. That, that portals that open up during that time. But thank God that the church of God is we are becoming awakened to our authority. So as you go to Ottawa, one of the things you can do as an ecclesia is come in the courts of heaven and contain for a restraining order uh, to be uh, to contained for the a restraining order against them using the star gates. Uh, they cannot bring anything into Canada through the star gates based upon the timing that that, that is going to be. You see what I'm saying? And so yes. you know, that's one of the elements that you know, I be, we are, you know, we are contending with, you know, uh, in uh, in this season, as we are we are beginning to augment some prayers around that issue. Okay, so that's so 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 according to this uh, Deborah, that's how she won against Sisera because the stars began to fight for her in their constellations. Okay, you know, and uh, this is so powerful. That's why. Uh, uh, that's why, yeah, that's why, because of that, what happens is that because of the movement in the stars, they caused floods to happen that, and they, that swept away much of the army was flooded. Actually, they actually died, they drowned because, as you know, you know, uh, that, that much of the, the moon, the, 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 the moon the, it's a constellation of the moving of the moon, which is part of the, the moon is just a big star, you know, uh, it's a part of the moon, it's part of the mooning, the moving of the stars that causes the ocean tides, you know, so after the, the stars began, began, made a particular formation in the constellation, if you look at verse 21, the, there was a torrent, that means a flooding in, in the valley of Kidron, where was the armies of the Canaanites in the valley of Kidron? From nowhere, you know, water comes because here is Deborah in the prophetic managing the stargates from a biblical standpoint. The problem with Christians is that we have been so naive for a long time and so afraid of the deep things of God. So we, are, we, we, we attribute more power to witchcraft than to our God who made everything. You know, you know as a matter of fact, in... in um, in Psalms 8, let me do Psalms 8, David talks about, you know, how the constellations are actually the crown around our head. Uh, I mean, we, we are, watch this, he says, he says in, is in, in Psalms 8, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have gained strength because of your, because of your enemies. Now watch this. You may that you may silence the enemy of the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, notice the moon and the stars, which you have ordained. What is man that you are mindful of him? What why would he say that just right? Because if the moon and the stars they are there in the constellations, not as decorations, but to help man cooperate with God concerning what in, in other words, the stars and the moon and the stars. They are part of the ordinances of the heavens by which we establish our dominion. Cut, turn in your Bibles very quickly to Job, because Job talks about this. Job 38, and I believe it's Job 38, verse 33, if I'm not Job, the book of Job, J-O-B, J-O-B. And then I'm going to give you two more things, and then I'm going to pray with you, and I'm going to call it a night so you guys can continue doing your thing there. Uh, okay, Job 38, Job 38. 38, and let's look at verse, I believe it's 33. Yeah, so this is God asking, 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 uh, uh, what is, you know, uh, what is his it's, it's job, is God talking to Job. And right before he says this to what I'm about to let's start at verse 31, because then you understand the context. The context. 
If you, if you don't read this scripture properly, you may think that God is rebuking Job or trying to say, Job, you, you are you're just a, no, no, he's actually, he, he, it's not a rebuke. God is asking, this is how Jewish rabbis teach. You see, rabbis, rabbinical teaching is not, you know, Gentile teaching is factual. A plus two, whatever, you know, but, but rabbinical teaching is question-based. And that's why the be quiet. It's the, that's the rabbi based all their teaching on questions because that's the way God teaches. You know, when he comes in the garden, Adam, where you are, that's how God does it. So it's a rabbinical way of teaching. You know, that's why, you know, Jewish, you know, I, I think our children will be much smarter if we taught that way than factual. Because what happens is that they have found out that when you ask a question, it stimulates the mind faster than you just dumping facts and you just hope people got it. That's gentle thinking. That's why it's difficult our children to go to through school. So they have tougher. They can some Jewish people go through sometimes. Why? Because if they if it, if it's, they're grown up under that type of rabbinical question type teaching, their ability, their ability to reason is developed very very fast. That's how God does it. So when God is speaking to Job, he's using the rabbinical modality of teaching. So it's not, he's not trying to brag that Job cannot do what God is asking. He's in, in the question, he's saying, can you realize how much you have fallen from your dominion? Right. Can you imagine how much you have fallen from the throne of Adam? Because everything I'm asking you, Adam could do until he fell blind, until he fell, and you guys have forgotten. You know, so it's, 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 a, it's a rabbinical modality. So let's read it from that understanding. So God is speaking and he says, we begin from this one. Can you bind the cluster of the Palladis? Can you bind the cluster of the Palladis? Or loose the belt of Orion? Can you bring out Mazaroth in its season? All these are constellations, you know? Or can you guide the great bear with its cubs? Then he asked the question, do you know the ordinance of the heavens? What is he saying? Do you know the ones of the heavens? Can you, you set their dominion over the earth? He asked two questions. Both questions are, are huge. Rabbinical teaching again. Do you know the, 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 the ordinance of the heavens? What is he saying? In other way, he's saying, listen, he's saying by, by asking, do you know the ordinance of the heavens, there is an implication that the ordinance of the heavens are there. And, in, and the second question also is another fact that if, if they are there and you knew them, you can actually use them to establish your dominion on earth. That's the what God is saying. You know, he says, because remember what is Job doing? He's been under divine uh, demonic attack and, and he's complaining, his friends have come. They are telling him, well, maybe just do this, his wife, whatever. God is a job. You feel sorry for yourself. If you only knew the authority you've got, you could fix this faster than you just complaining about the stuff, some of the stuff you're going through. But, but look at the, 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 the reason you know that, every, that the, this is what God is trying to communicate is the very next thing, as, as it, is the very next question. Can you lift up your voice to the clouds that an abundance of water may cover you? What is he saying? Can you speak to the rain and rain comes down? Elijah did. So, oh, voila, if Elijah did it, then speaking to the clouds to release rain is not a divine attribute. It's a man attribute. It's, a, it's within the office of Adam, okay? We are now occupying the office of Adam through the last Adam, Yeshua, who took back the throne. So we can use these constellations to completely paralyze them because that's what they are using. The problem is they are using it for a fallen angel. We are using it for the glory of God. Right. You know, so that's, you know, what, what I was trying to show you. So as you go there, I can tell you already they are doing it now. You know, as you get there, you are going to say, Lord, you know, in the court of heaven, we are asking for a divorce decree between them and the constellations. They can't use them if they're going to use them against you. We, we make a petition. You know, we, we have a representation in the court of heaven. And the court of heaven will listen to us, you know. Because we are arguing for the glory of God. What's more powerful than arguing for the glory of God in the courts of heaven? You right. win all the time if you argue for the, for the glory of God. You know? So that's that. And then we go to turn to the book of, now, uh, turn to the book of Jeremiah. 
uh, and then Jeremiah. I'm giving you, uh, so I've talked about the stars, now I'm gonna talk about the, uh, the uh, speaking to the earth, because when you get there, you gotta speak to the earth, particularly because it's Yom Kippur. The earth is much sensitive to the voice of the Lord on Yom Kippur, because, because watch this, the earth is a living creature, and she was the first creature to test the blood of Jesus. You know, and so on Yom Kippur, you know, you, have, you, you can reset Canada if you know what you're doing. We can reset much of what's happening in Canada. Go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 22. And look at 29 and 30. Okay. Are you there? So yes, yes. let's go to yeah, 20, Jeremiah 22, verse 29 and 30. Okay. Yeah. So watch this now. Now, the background to this scripture to, to help uh, to help understand it is that if you look back, God is angry against a heir to the throne by the name of Coniah. Coniah's behavior was so appalling well, that God literally despised him. And, and God, even though he came from the blood of David, he was so evil you know, and so liberious that God says, you are never going to rule on the throne of David. But how did God bring it about? How did God bring it to pass? He, he went, he borrowed the mouth of Jeremiah to speak to the earth so that the earth could monitor and could monitor uh, Conaniah for destruction. So this is where he speaks. So uh, Jeremiah speaks to the earth on behalf of the Lord. Oh, earth, earth, earth. So he's speaking to the earth. Hear the word of the Lord. So the earth is, a, is alive. She's alive. She's a living creature. Okay. And trust me, these witches speak to her. That's why they're controlling Canada. They have been speaking to Canada longer than we've been doing it. You know, but thank God we are coming alive to that. And the more we speak to Canada, the more we speak to the earth of Canada, I'm telling you, the nation, they, 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 they are going to begin to, they're going to continue to lose ground because this is one thing the devil don't want us to be doing. You know, but he says, oh, earth, earth, hear the word of the Lord. So the earth can hear the word of the Lord. Now, what was the word of the Lord in this case? That says the Lord, write this man childless. A man who shall not prosper in his days. For none of his descendants shall prosper, sitting on the throne of David and ruling anymore in Judah. So he says, so all Jeremiah did is God didn't speak to the earth. Once you speak to the earth, walk away. Now the earth is weaponized to locate Conaniah, and the earth will make sure. Man, the earth is powerful. That the earth will make sure that he will be childless. That he will be, he will not sit on the throne of David. He will not prosper. This is amazing. And if you follow the story of Coroniah, right after Jer Jeremiah did this, the king of Babylon, Afghanistan, came and destroyed Israel. And that's when Daniel was taken, and the Joachim, the father of Coroniah, the king, was killed. And Joachim and Coroniah was taken into exile, never to return again. He never came back to Israel. He died in exile. Okay, but you know, but you know, never to be from our declaration is, is never even even Babylon never prospered. You know, my point is God is trusting the earth with a powerful instruction. The earth is such a powerful uh, uh, tool of the spirit that when you give it an instruction, like it was given an instruction by witches to kill me, and boy, she almost killed me. But when I spoke to the earth to release me, she did because the voice, the, the voice of the of the redeemed of the Lord. We are as more is I has a higher claim on the earth because again we all of creation is groaning for us 
Because creation doesn't want to do evil. Creation want to be used for righteousness. So you have no idea. It's like when you, when you and I prophetically speak to the earth, to move the earth in the direction of righteousness, if I could give you a metaphor, it would be like how you would feel like if you are in a desert and you haven't drunk water and somebody gives you a, a, a cold glass of water. Oh, I mean, it's that, that creation, the earth feels like that when, when, he hear, it's, when she hears the voice of the redeemed, speaking to the earth to line her up with righteousness versus what she hears every day by witches and wizards using human blood and different things and, and speaking incantations and doing the same thing to people, to Christians, pastors, you know, who all of a sudden they were doing well and bam, they collapsed because a witch took the earth and she spoke to the earth and that father thought, well, I'm under grace, God, it can't be touched. Oh, no, 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 this tooth of the spirit are powerful. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I almost got destroyed because for lack of knowledge, but thank God, it's mercy, I know what I know now, you know? So when you go there to Altera, I want you to take this scripture and change it and, and conform it to Canada, make that your decree, you speak to the earth, you know? So is that right? You know, uh, so you can say, for instance, uh, earth, 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 that's what the Lord, write this government, you know, if the government is doing evil, Write this government or whatever or whatever as powerless. So you can change childless to powerless. You can change those words. Write them down as powerless. You know, a government or a man who will not prosper in destroying Canada. You can make your edit. And the earth now becomes a harbinger, uh, an administrator of that prophetic decree. And you're going to begin to see what happened. Next election, gone. This one is gone. People resigning. What happened? Because the earth is going after them one after the other because they have been declared childless. Oh no, they have been declared powerless. You yeah. know, by people who understand how to speak to the earth or for the glory of God. Okay, so that is Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know that is very powerful. Now I'll give you the last one that God gave me for you. You know, and this is this is this is in Exodus. Ashes. Everybody said, write the word ashes. Ashes, ashes, ashes. Jeez. So I want to turn your Bible to Exodus chapter 8. Exodus chapter 8. Exodus. Yeah, Exodus. Yes. The plague. Yeah, uh, let's see. Exodus. Oh, not Exodus 8. Might be missing. Might be 9. Aha. Uh -huh. See Exodus 9. Exodus 9, verse 8. Can you read it, Mike? Yeah. The eight. Lord, the eight uh, yeah. Uh, 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 read verse 8 to 10. Okay. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, take handfuls of soot from a furnace and have Moses toss it into the air in the presence of Pharaoh. It will become fine dust over the whole land of Egypt and fester boils will break out on people and animals throughout the land. So they took soot from the furnace and stood before Pharaoh. Moses tossed it into the air and festering boils broke out on people and animals. Okay, and then verse 11 too. Okay, uh, the magicians could not stand for Moses because of the boils that were on them and all of the Egyptians. Okay, so even their sorcerers were touched, were judged. So this, so God says the ashes is a prophetic scene. So God, this is a thumbing God has given me recently and I gave it to Suzanne, he national prayer call, so they are doing it all over America, is the ashes of divine judgment. Take ashes with you. Go with ashes or make, get some ashes. When yeah. you get there, you are going to, as a Christian, throw the shofar, you know, throw them in the air and make decrees that the boils of divine judgment are going to come upon any Canadian, we don't care who, what person they have in Canada, who has aligned themselves against the destiny of the nation. Now, we're not calling for their death. You know, we are calling for boils of divine judgment. Now, boils here, I metaphor. In this particular case, God actually gave them boils. But when, but in our case, when, when we speak prophetically, 
in the boils of divine judgment who is exactly is, is whatever the Lord will choose in order to put the fear of the Lord on them. You know, but but what the but what the, but the thing about that judgment of the ashes, it affects the sorcerers. Why were the magicians important? Because the magicians were the end, were the strength of Egypt. So God wanted to make sure that this judgment I'm releasing to take back the country is so powerful, it's beyond the magic of Egypt. So we are going to pray that the boils of divine judgment will even come on the sorcerers that these government leaders are consulting with on these portals in order to take Canada in the direction of evil away from its righteous, godly foundations. So that is what you're going to do. You know, is and then you blow the shofar, and then the, and then call. But now, when you speak, you know, say, Lord, before when 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 you get ready to throw the ashes, you might need to make a proclamation. Father, we stand in the courts of heaven, uh, and we release as we get ready to release these ashes. We declare and we prophesy, even by the blowing of the shofar, that as we blow, we throw the ashes in the air, in the air, the east wind will carry these ashes of divine judgment to the land of judgment. And locate every messenger of Satan who is determined to destroy this nation, you know, including the sorcerers that they are depending on for any kind of divination. You're gonna, you talk about, you, you talk about God confusing people, uh, attaching people. This is powerful. So this is what we are doing in America. Actually, right now we are doing it in all 50 states as we get ready for our election here, because we don't want what happened in 2020 to happen again. But I'm telling you that that's why things are moving. That's why this year it's going to be, we are very active this year. So I, those are the three things I want to give to your prayer group. Those three yeah. prophetic acts, I think you should do them in Ottawa. You know, you're going to see some results. You're going to begin to hear some things in the days to come. All that right? Is, that is amazing. You know, uh, I just wanted to show you, I, I've carried this uh, sheet with me all across Canada with your name on it, that earth, earth, earth. So I've gone to every province, every territory, with wow. your prayer, speaking to every capital city, every legislative building, coast to coast, uh, preparing for this time. So Jesus. we've been following your teaching on this earth, earth, earth stuff. What you've just said about the Maseroff has ignited me. I've been thinking about the Maseroff for years and how we have yes. to claim the Maseroff. We've given it away to the enemy rather than having authority that the Lord is to give us with that yes and you've topped it off with the ashes at the end it's so powerful uh just thank you for that that we i feel the power my body's vibrating and before you go if you could pray for us uh and yes just an anointing onto us as we go oh, amazing. everybody just raise your hand before the lord my, i'm gonna ask the lord to anoint you for the apostolic assignment uh, he has given to you father in the name of karabakite bokata Randala Bamando Robokata, Father, by the rod and by the rod of the superior priesthood of Melchizedek, and you are pressed upon my life. I pray for my brother Mike and the entire prophetic team of intercessors and warriors. I declare right now, as their hands are raised, that Father, you give them a a, 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 a put upon them the spirit of Elijah. Put upon their hands the anointing of Elijah in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let them become the Moses generation that is going to be able to work, are going to work with, a, are going to work with creation to cause, to break the back of the Pharaoh spirits over the land in the name of Jesus. That the 10 gods of Egypt are not going to survive our ability to mobilize creation to fight. So Father, I, 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 I ask you to anoint them for speaking to the earth in Ottawa. I ask you to anoint them when they when they for blowing of the ashes and the blowing of the shofar i ask you to anoint them as they as they contend in the in the courts of heaven that lord any 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 communication system going through the constellations by the sorcerers and the government officials in Canada that are working on, are working for a different altar will be demobilized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as this prayer warrior company arrives in Jesus and connects with the body of Christ to raise of our nations, not by man or by power, but by the Holy Ghost of God. Touch them, Jesus, to your glory in Jesus' yes. mighty name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, appreciate it. Blessings. Thank you, Dr. Miles. Bless you. Thank you. You guys are fun. These are incredible days. Incredible days. Thank you. Yes, they are. <laughs> Blessings, brother. Thank you.